Today, we're going to be taking a look at upgrading our SCOM 2019 environment, or re well, really not upgrading, more so just installing an additional role. So um, previously, we just deployed a base um, Windows um, Server 2019 running SCOM 2019, and only the management server role and database server role. So today, we'll be just deploying the web console. So let's get right into it. So here we are, we're sitting on the desktop of our SCOM 2019 management server and I'm just going to jump over to File Explorer and here I already have my ISO for um, System Operation Manager 2019 already extracted so I'm just going to go ahead and run the setup. So this is a pretty easy and quick install for this, um, it's not not a whole lot to it and it's mostly self-explanatory so we'll just go right on through it here. So we'll go ahead and click install. Just minimize this, get this out of the way. That'll go ahead and launch our setup. And here, um, since I already have um, a management server role installed here, it's just going to prompt me for if I want to add a feature, remove a feature, or repair my installation. In my case, I want to add a feature, so I'll just say add a feature. And as you can see here, um, any role that's already installed, it will be like kind of grayed out here. So in this case, it's the management server as well as the operation console is already installed. Then what I want to add is the web console to this same server. So I'll just click web console, click next. And here I, I'm failing a whole lot of the prerequisites. So uh, obviously the web console it, it has a dependency on various IIS roles. So it's showing me a long list of those that I need to install to fulfill this. And also I have our pending reboot um, here at the bottom here. So we need to go ahead, go through and go through one by one and make sure we have all these roles installed. So let's do that now. So for this, there's a couple different ways how you can do this. So if you're pretty good in PowerShell, you can run it in PowerShell and install the other various roles, or you can go to um, server manager and over in server manager, you can go to manage and add roles and features and go next. Go next through role base, go next through the server name. And then on this list here, you'll scroll down and find um, web server. So you have to enable the web server role. And there are some prerequisite features that that requires. And you'll say add features. And then you'll go next and next again. And then next again. And then here, based on those prerequisites that you saw um, over here, you'll kind of go through. Um, line by line and making sure you check the various role that this says that it requires. Um, so that may take you a little while to do that. Um, alternative way is that kind of I have a little cheat sheet PowerShell um, that I have here um, that will go and enable all of those features that we need. So let's show you the PowerShell route. So I'll just go ahead and copy this. And then I'm going to go ahead and launch a PowerShell ISE. Or you can do it in regular PowerShell. I just prefer to run the PowerShell ISC uh, most of the time. So once you have that open, I can just go ahead and paste that in. And so have all my line items there and then just go ahead and run that line item. And what that'll do, that'll go ahead and enable all of those roles that I require for the, um, for the SCOM web console. And um, once that completes, Please, um, it's, it's highly recommended that you reboot your system, even if you're not prompted, um, because there are some features of IIS that doesn't fully register until you actually reboot. Um, so um, in this case, I got an error. Uh, let's see what's going on here. I did get an error. So we need to figure out what that error means exactly and um, fix that. And it may be that I have that pinned to reboot waiting as well. It may have something to do with it, but um, let's figure that out and we'll be right back. So on second thought, let's take the longer route and let's go through and see can we match up um, what's in server manager for installing the web server role with what's on the right hand side here. So if we look on the left, we see web server IS support role. So we've already selected that. IS metabase compatibility. Let's see, can we find that in the list here? I think that's under here somewhere. Metabase compatibility. There we go. 
ASP.NET role service. Let's go find that. I believe that's under application development. Maybe. And none of those looks like the exact same wording, but let's we'll come back to that one. We'll find it. Windows Authentication Service role. So let's find that. Windows Authentication. Static content. Static content role. Um, okay, that's already selected. Default document, that's already selected. Directory browsing, already selected. HTTP errors, already selected. HTTP logging, we already have that one. Request monitor, let's go ahead and check that. Request filtering. Uh, let's see, can we find that in the list here? Okay, that's already selected. Static content compression, already selected. HTTP activation service. So that one I don't think is in the IIS piece. I think that's in, I think that's like in a .NET piece. So uh, we'll come back to that one. ISAPI and CGI. Let's see, can we find that? Uh, CGI. And I'm assuming those two could be wrong, but probably can't hurt too much to have them. And ASP.NET 4X. So let's do this 4.7 piece. And it looks like that has a few additional um, pieces. Say add features. And let's go ahead and run this and let's see how we did. So what we'll do, we'll let this go and run through um, the installation. And then once this completes, we'll come back to the setup wizard for SCOM and verify the prerequisite again and see how um, good or bad we've been or what, what we missed. So we'll give that a few minutes to run and we'll check and see how that went. Okay, that installation went successfully. It took maybe about two minutes there. Um, so let's go ahead and close out of that. And let's hop back over to the SCOM install and let's verify prerequisite again. All right, so we're still missing a few. So um, ASP.NET role service. So we missed that one. Um, these, I think I did select, but I think these requires a reboot. Um, same for these um, to actually be successful. But like we did miss the HTTP activation role. So let's go in, back into server manager and back to manage and add roles and features. Next, next, next again, and next one more time. So the HTTP activation, um, as I mentioned, is part of the .NET framework. So we're gonna go ahead and expand out the .NET framework and expand on WCF services. And there we go, HTTP activation. And that has a free few prerequisite that it requires. So we'll go ahead and add those. And then we'll go next and install. So this time after this install um, completes, I'm gonna go ahead and reboot. And then we're gonna check in here again and see um, what we're missing. Um, so I think we may still err out on this piece, but We'll go ahead, reboot, and, and check out um, the results. All right, so we go, went ahead and went through that last little setup and rebooted, and I went ahead and ran the prerequisites again. And then, yeah, as expected, um, I did get this ASP.NET role service. It's not a stall, so that's one I still missed. So um, yet again, we need to go back into Server Manager manage, add roles or features, next, 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 and next, and actually, let's go back. So here, um, so this time the view is gonna look a little bit different since we're going through this wizard yet again. So we need to go into web server and we're gonna go and look for something that says ASP.NET role server. So that's, that's one we missed somewhere along the lines. So I'm not sure um, what category. So um, I would assume it's application development, but we have ASP.NET there. 
right? Already selected, but it's still saying we're missing something. So where exactly is that ASP.NET role service? Hmm. Got to look in, look in these categories. So maybe something else says that. So looking through that, it looks like none of those says that. So maybe it's this one. Possibly. So this for this for some of this can get kind of confusing on what exactly you need, right? If ASP.NET role service is not installed. There's two things that says ASP.NET, right? One of them is installed. So maybe it's that one. Let's see. Nothing ASP.NET there. So one thing to keep in mind, um, whenever you have to install um, like .NET Network Framework 3.5, you may have to specify uh, a path to the installation media for the OS. So on the installation media, there is a XXS Sam Xavier Sam <laughs> folder. So that's the folder that normally contains like the .NET Framework and, and any other like installer. So you have to point it to that folder. Um, through this wizard, so you'll say specify an alternate alternate source path, put in what the path is to there. So they have a little example there. So e sources s x s, and then that will install that particular piece. So let's go ahead and do that and see if this works. All right, so the installation of the .NET Framework succeeded. So now let's, again, let's hop back to the SCOM console and see what's what's going on. So let's go ahead and verify prerequisites again. Now it's happy. So yeah, you may have to go through the same kind of, um, somewhat of a pain going through selecting all of those roles making sure you got all of them selected. You may have to do a, a reboot or two uh, before it's all happy and good. Um, so now mine is requesting yet another reboot. So I'm gonna go ahead and reboot again and then we'll come back and then hopefully we'll finally be able to continue in the installation. So here we are again. Um, so after we reboot, relaunching the setup, look like we're all good to go now. So um, looks like third time yeah, maybe, maybe third time, that's the charm, as far as getting all of those selections right. So let's go ahead and continue with the installation. Let's go ahead and say next. And then here it prompts us for um, default website. Um, so um, typically you're just going to select the default website to install the server to. So that site exists by default when you deploy iOS on the server. Then you have an option for enabling SSL. So in my case, I actually do want to enable SSL um, but um, first I need to do a couple of things. So in order for you to do this, you, you'll have to have some type of certificate already deployed on the server, or I guess you could use a self-signed cert as well. Um, but in my case, I'm using, I'm gonna use a cert that's issued from my internal CA that's part of my lab. So let me go in, we're gonna go into IIS and go ahead and configure IIS to use that SSL cert. So let's go and do that now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and launch my IIS. Um, manager and then over on IS I'm just going to go to my default website and I'm going to right click and edit the bindings on the website so by default it creates this um, regular HTTP 480 against all IP addresses as a default so I'm going to add an additional binding so I'll say add and on the drop down I'm just going to say HTTPS it'll do the default port I'm not going to specify a host name so I'm going to keep all of that as is. I'm just going to go and select my certificate. So as mentioned, I already have a certificate on my server. So your, your list may be blank in your environment if you don't have a certificate. But I, I do here. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. So now I have my binding. Go ahead and close. All right. And then I'm just going to jump back over to the setup. Gonna check the enable SSL box. And then now here I'm getting an error message that reporting phone is not installed or it's not being installed, blah, blah, blah. 
um, just telling me that a recording is not there. Um, some free, certain features won't work correctly, in particular, Application Advisor, which is a part of the APM feature in, in SCOM. So um, I, I probably will deploy the recording piece um, later on a different server, though. So um, go ahead and say next. And in my case, I will use mix authentication, so I'll leave that check. Say next. Um, so and then I'm just getting a message about um, that the tool will collect data, send it over to Microsoft. Um, it's on by default. You can turn it off later, but you cannot turn it off right here. So it's just giving you those details and link to the privacy statement if you want to read exactly uh, the details on that. So go next. And it's prompting me if I want to use Microsoft Update or not. Um, I will, but I but I won't. So hope <laughs> if that makes sense. So I'm gonna say off here, but I probably will still use Microsoft Update to pull updates down. But I just don't want it to do it automatically um, in updating SCOM um, at this point. So I'll leave that as the off. And then next, and I just get a preview of what it's about to do, and I'll go ahead and say install. So after a few minutes here, um, we should install successfully and we should have a working console. So now we have the console set up completed successfully. So let's go ahead and close out of this window and let's go ahead and close IS and let's close setup and let's just open a browser here. And then I'm just gonna go to So that's going to go to that complete URL there, and actually I'll go ahead and type a fully qualified. So right here I'm just using the Internet Explorer browser. So, so I'm getting prompted for username and password, so let's go ahead and provide that. Looks like it's trying to connect. And as you see here, since I, I'm using a valid SSL cert, I, I don't have like the Nastygram telling me my certificate may be invalid or someone is trying to hack me type of message. Since my certificate is valid um, on my domain and it can be um, certified or, or verified by my internal CA that my system trusts. So there, there we have it. Now we're in the HTML5 web console of um, SCOM 2019. So um, a while back, I, I did a video on on this console for SCOM 1801 is when it was originally introduced. But new features have been added since in, since from 1801, then to 1807, and now 2019. There are several new features, and like you see here, there's actually these two new dashboards that are specific to um, SCOM 2019. But we'll, we'll explore these in a, a future video, hopefully. And um, so, but hopefully this video um, here has been useful and we'll see you in the next one.